Home is where the heart is, and for many of us, our hearts in the mountains. And on this adventure, I'm spending a lot of time in the mountains whilst trying to get back home. It sees me going through some of Scotland's most remote and wonderful landscapes at the same time. The main aim is to get back home after being dropped off quite a distance away. And that's why you see me sitting here on a train, looking at the mountains as I travel 85 miles north of my hometown. I couldn't find much information on the route I'd chosen to get back home, so I wasn't even sure if it was going to be doable. So join me and see if I make it back home. Uh, right, just stopped for a wee break. I've been walking for about an hour and I'm in the wonderful Rothy Murcus, ancient Caledonian forest in Scotland. And I've just been in the train for a few hours and been dropped off in Aviemore, which is about 85 miles, or which equates to about 136, 137 kilometres from home. And over the next few days, <laughs> I am hoping to get just to walk home, really. And it's going to take me through some amazing landscapes, through some of the highest mountains in Scotland, some ancient forests, uh, some bits that I've never been to before, uncharted territory for me, and I'm not sure if I'm even going to get that far because there's quite a few um, sizeable burns and rivers that are impassable if there's a lot of water in them. And there's areas which I, I just don't know if there's going to be paths, that, you know, how rough the ground's going to be. So it might be longer than 85 miles. <laughs> Let's see. Anyway, I've stopped here. I'm going to get a bite to eat and then I'm going to get cracked on and uh, try and head into the mountains for the, the first camp tonight. So I'll report back in a wee while. Well, it's a wonderful walk through this old forest and I've just come to a wee clearing and I can see my destination for tonight. So I'll spin you around and show you where I'm aiming to get. So you probably can't see it too well on the uh, the camera, but you can see the next set of trees coming up, and beyond that is the pass of the Larry Guru. You see the snow patches on the mountains, and on either side is the I think it's the second and third highest mountains in Scotland. And the pass itself goes up to the pools of Dee at round about oh god. I think it's about 100, uh, 800, uh, 800, 800, just under 850 metres I think, so it goes up to a fair old height, not far off Monroe level actually. <sighs> and that's what I've got ahead of me, so it's going to be a steep pool, I'm not sure if I'll get there. I didn't start the, uh, the adventure till 2 o'clock today because of the train times, so we'll see. We've got till about 9 o'clock till it gets dark, but I'd really like to get up to the pools of D um, if I want to stay on course for getting back home in time for work next week. <laughs> anyway, let's go. <laughs> well, just put the camera on, it's first sign of rain, start to rain, so yeah, I've stopped to have some chocolate, that's, a, that's not a good sign. <laughs> but I think today, it's going to be the day with the most ascent in it, even though, as I said, it's only half a half day. And um, yeah, it's actually quite cold. I'm going to go and, um, I'm going to get my jacket on now, now that it's raining, and get the rain, the rain cover on my my bag, something that I'm new to actually, which I'll come on to that later on, but just a wee shower, I might just blow through, but yeah, let's, um, yeah, I'm all fueled up, <laughs> a wee bit of chocolate always helps, I'll report back when I'm above the, uh, the tree line, right, let's get this jacket on, I'll get the, uh, the cover on the backpack, oh, it's literally going off again, but you know what, just in case there's any more showers, I'm just going to stick this jacket on because it is a bit colder and I'll get the backpack rain cover on it and the reason that I've brought that now is I always, I've always put everything in dry bags and I still do that within the bag but I did notice, and it was torrential if you saw the West Highland Way video where we had to bail from that even the electronics which were meant to be in so-called dry bags weren't dry not all the dry bags that claim to be waterproof <laughs> Found out aren't waterproofs, I thought.
typical. Gets the waterproof jack on, puts the waterproof thing in the backpack, sun comes out. No, nope, sun's there. So with the contents of my rucksack suitably waterproofed with both a exterior cover and internal dry bags, I headed on and headed up through the Rothy Murcus estate. And as I mentioned, my intended target was to get to the high point and camp near the pools of tea in the Larry Grew. Right, that's me just about out of the... Uh, the Rothy Murcus Forest. I don't know if you can see it stretching down. It's probably not picked up on the camera, but it is. It is it's probably one of the biggest natural forests in Scotland. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong there, but it's, uh, it does look rather large from here, which is unusual because, you know, much of Scotland's been deforested over the years, over the millennium, unfortunately, but it's, it was a lovely walk through that pinewood. But, uh, anyway, that's me just about at the top of the tree lane. And I can see the Larry Groot a bit more pronounced now. Oh, yes. Uh, well, hopefully you can make out the Larry Groot behind me now. That V, it uh, still seems a long way away. And I must say my, my pace has slowed right down. I was belting along the flat on the nice flat surfaces of the Rothy Murcus wood but the uh, the path here is actually quite wide but it goes to single track and it starts to climb and I tell you with all this weight on my back aye, it's, I'm probably going about half the pace as I was in the flat so just shows you what a wee bit of ascent does when you've got a heavy pack <laughs> should be used to that shouldn't I really anyway, right, let's go The Larry Gru is probably one of the best known passes in Scotland and it goes up to the height of 835 metres and is surrounded by some of Scotland's highest mountains. And as I made my way up, these cliffs were imposing down on me with the dark clouds surrounding them. It was quite foreboding. Right, I'm at the high points of the pass. It's a bit windy, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, it's cleared a wee bit now, but there was a wet snow showers blowing in. But you can see back down the way I came now to the north, back down over the Rothy Murcus estate towards Abbey Moor. And from this point, I start heading south. Well, I've been heading south anyway, but down this way. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Just over around the corner there is where I'm going. Hold on, let me just. Yeah, down there over that, but another 15 20 minutes, and I should see the pools of D. And then the views will be different if the uh, if the cloud lifts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's let's move on. And what I'll do is I will uh, report back when I'm getting the tent up. Hopefully, I'll find a pitch because it's blooming rocky. Right, update. As you can tell, I'm not at the pools of D. <laughs> It was just, there was a couple of spots I could have pitched, but it was really wet. I think the snow melt has uh, soaked everything through and it's just soaking <laughs> everywhere. So I've decided I was going to camp here tonight. To get, the view would be nice if the tops were clear, but it's still soggy here, but it's the best that I can find. Uh, and it's a bit breezy, but you know what? It's going to be dark in about 45 minutes to an hour, so I need to get the tent up, get some, uh, get myself fed and... Yeah, look at it, sunny down there. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, let's get this tent up. I'll report back when I've got the tent up. I'll not bother videoing me putting the tent up. I'll just report back once it's up. I hope you don't mind. Right. I don't know if you can hear that. It's absolutely bashing it down now. That was the forecast. Anyway, right. Got my tea. Yep. So I'm going to have some of that. And then uh, I'll report back in a wee while. Tell you what, I'm glad I got the tent up when I did though, because that is pretty minging. Right, yeah. Right. Oh, I tell you what, it's not warm. <laughs> it's absolutely freezing. Um, oh, my feet are cold. I'm going to get my hot water bottle sorted out. 
in a minute and then go and chill on my sleeping bag. It's about half past nine. Um, I've had a wee look at the stats. I've done about just over 12 miles today. Um, and the high point was 835 metres or over 2,000 feet. So, yeah, I think not bad for starting at two o'clock in the afternoon. But, um, yeah, tomorrow I'm, uh, I'm a bit more concerned, actually, because uh, there's uh, a couple of river crossings and everything here is saturated. There's not been that much rain in the forecast. I've been keeping an eye on it, but I don't know whether it's just because I'm on the, the Glen floor with the steep-sided um, hills at the Larry Gru. But if it's as wet as this <laughs> everywhere else, there's a good chance I'll not be getting across that river tomorrow. But we'll see. It may be, it may be a doddle, I don't know. Um, I really don't know, but um, anyway, I'm going to get uh, warmed up with my hot water bottle and my sleeping bag. I think um, I was going to just run through a few things, I'll maybe run through what I've got with me. Um, each night and I'll, tonight um, my sleeping system well you know I've got my tent <laughs> I've got my winter sleeping system with me thankfully because it's blooming freezing it is forecast to be minus one minus two overnight uh, for tonight and tomorrow night so I've brought my big thick X-bed uh, nine uh, downfold ground mat and I've got my Rabaset 900 winter bag with uh, my Sea to Summit silk liner uh, and I've got my wee hot water bottle as well so um, yeah I'll maybe go over what food I've got tomorrow and what other gear I've brought the night after so for now I'm going to call it a night and I'll see you guys in the morning let's hope I get a good night's sleep right Good morning. It is just past seven o'clock, and all I can hear is the burn or the stream roaring away. <laughs> That's uh, concerning. As I said, there's a ro river crossing today, and uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of reports that if the rivers, if there's been rain or a lot of snow melt, you just can't get across it. I'm, I'm kind of hoping it's not going to be like that. Obviously. <laughs> Anyway, I'll find out in a few hours, but let's have a look and see what the weather's doing outside, I'm hoping. I, I know that the wind's dropped down, actually. It was, it was really quite... It was buffeting the tent last night, but it seems to have dissipated this morning, so... Let's have a look and see. Let's spin you around. Time for some coffee. Oh, sunshine. Oh yes, and I use the uh, the water from my uh, if I can find it hot water bottle. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and I say so. Yeah, I use uh, the water, and that keeps it. Uh, it probably was hovering about freezing last night, but uh, having that one heat me up and two it stops it from freezing if it is cold. But what a morning! Hey, look at this. Look at these mountains. Uh, we're into into spring. It's uh, well into April, but even with, with it being having been a poor winter, relatively speaking, in Scotland terms in terms of snow, there's still a lot of snow up in those high quarries. And this shapely peak on the left, Angels uh, Angels Ridge and the Angels Peak. And the last time I was here, I was doing that with my brother. It's a lovely Grade One scramble to the summit. A lovely line. Anyway, right. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this juice on. I am needing some coffee. Oh, what a morning, it's still cold. Don't get me wrong, it might look idyllic on the camera, but there's a keen, keen breeze. It's not as uh, windy as it was last night, but yeah, there's a keen breeze coming down from the top of the Larry, the Larry Grew. I can see where I'm going. The peak on your left is the Devil's Point, famously renamed by one of uh, Queen Victoria's gillies. I want to say James Brown. Billy Conley played him. <laughs> and uh, they were too embarrassed to say that the real name um, translated to the Devil's Penis. 
I think it's Ambodak. Uh, no, it's not Ambodak. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen the actual Gaelic name of it, but uh, it's got a cheek to call itself a Munro. It looks quite shapely from here, but I always think it's just a wee shoulder, a wee outlier from Carn Tool and all these peaks. These 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 sort of four or five peaks down the west side of the Larry Grew are so distinguishable, especially when you're up in Ben McDewey. Absolutely amazing. Another thing I was going to mention about is this uh, this trip will end up following one of the best known rivers and the longest, I think, rivers in Scotland, but there's other rivers in Scotland, funnily enough. You'd, you'd, you'd be surprised given the amount of <laughs> rainfall. Anyway, the pools of Dee, funnily enough, are, they're not the source, because I think up in this, this hill here is the third highest Brewerich in, uh, in Scotland. It's got some magnificent quarries, and you just start to see them here. Uh, and there's the wells of Dee, or the, yeah, the spring of Dee, the wells of Dee, right at the top. Um, and that's the, the source of the River Dee, and that's what we saw tumbling down. No, sorry, this is it here. What you can hear is it's tumbling down to the south, and it, it ends up down in Aberdeen. On the other side, when I was walking up to the north, is, uh, is a burn which, which feeds into the River Spey. So, yeah, these, these little tributaries here turn into magnificent big rivers, if you're interested in that. But look at this. What a morning. Right, coffee time. Well, as you can probably see, it's absolutely glorious. The wind seems to be dropping uh, further down. It'd be nice if it just disappears altogether. <laughs> it's time to break the tent down. Uh, this is what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, look at that. Isn't it just stunning? And you can tell I'm feeling optimistic because I've got my sunglasses on. I think it's going to be a fine day, but I really need to get going. I don't want to leave, I mean, why would you want to leave this scene? Uh, it, it never comes out on the camera. It's, this is one of the things that frustrates me, you can never capture it. Like, I'm looking at it now, you can't really see. You can, you can get a, a feel of it, but it never puts it across how magnificent it is. On a day like today, not a cloud in the sky now, white peaks, blue skies, I think it's going to be a good day, so... Enough procrastinating, Murray. Let's get this tent down. I'll report back when I'm on the trail. Right, that's the tent away. Time to hit the trail. Get this big back back on. Oh, I hate this, but oh, right. It's not any lighter. Should be. Oh, oh why am I leaving here? Why would you want to leave this? <laughs> anyway. Needs must. Time to head down and see what this rubber is going to be like later on. Whew. Let's go. Hey, that's me back in the trail. It's nice to be off that quagmire at the time, especially. What a morning. I've come down a wee bit, I've not been walking very far, but I'm now in the sunshine and uh, I had my gaiters on just whilst I was striking camp because it was really boggy where the tent was pitched but I can come off now because I'm on this path Another thing I can come off is this jacket as I am starting to get warm <laughs> It's going to be a good day I think, these sunglasses might be going on soon Anyway, I'll report back in a wee while Ooh. It certainly was a glorious morning the white peaks and the blue skies were just oh fantastic God. and it was kind of taking my mind off that what could be problematic river cross crossing later on. But anyway, it was lovely because I was walking downhill from the high point where I'd camped the night before. A nice easy start to the day. Well for those of you who've done the Larry Groot, you'll know that the path's a bit rocky but it's slowly starting to get a bit better now. Anyway, I'll spin you around and show you. The Devil's Point a bit more closely now. Yeah, so it's a bit more prominent from here. The, uh, the mountain of the Devil's Point. And it's a lot, it's actually a lot smaller. You can see there's less snow in it. It's, um, it's significantly less high than the uh, 
the Munros and mountains to its north. I suppose that's the, the centre of the Cairngorm Massive, it's starting to slope away. And behind me is Carnavame, which is about the same height, I think. Anyway, right underneath these magnificent big slabs, you might, you might be able to pick out a wee, a wee house. And that's Carrer Bothy. Probably one of the better known Bothies, to be honest with you. And it was a, certainly a backup plan. It was in my mind last night, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, if I'd gone there, I wouldn't have woken up to that view that I did this morning. So yeah, I'm not going to visit it. It looks like there's quite a few folk outside. It's actually the Easter weekend at the moment. And I'll come on to a re that being involved in me choosing this route. But uh, for now, let's go and uh, I'll report back later on. Well, it's near perfect walking conditions. There's a wee breeze. It's not super warm. It's just lovely. Uh, the only thing that's annoying me is I rolled my ankle a wee bit <laughs> uh, coming down there. I mean, you've got a big pack on. It's easier to do, and it. Um, yeah, I'm just. It's another reason why I, I haven't really been a convert over to trail shoes. Is uh, it just gives your ankles a wee bit more protection having the boots on. It doesn't stop you hurting them, but um, there's pros and cons to each. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about this. How good is it? I'm feeling brilliant. It's, you know, all this stuff about being closer to nature. These long distance treks really, really get you closer to nature. When, when nature's putting on a show like this, it's hard to beat. So I'm going to stop for some lunch in a wee while and uh, yeah, I'm still a bit worried about that river crossing. That could be a showstopper. Let's go on a bit further. I thought I'd do a wee bit to camera. Um, I've been walking for a wee while since the last bit. I've come down the Glen, uh, Glen D, beside the River D. It's been quite nice. And behind me is the uh, yeah the Cairngorm Central Massive, and I'll be saying bye to that soon. And uh, heading round, in fact, I'll show you this one here. That wee bump there's a core, but I think it's called Scour Moor. But I'll spin you around this way. You can see where I'll be heading down here, down towards the Chester D, which is down in here somewhere in the White Bridge. And those hills beyond are uh, hills kind of west of Glen Sheeb. Ones like Ben Lure and Vore and Carnaray. And I'll be heading up to the right when I get down up to between them. And eventually between uh, the hill called Carnaray, which is, they're all big hills still, but they're just not as big as these ones. <laughs> um, hopefully, the route will take me between Carnaray and Ben Um whether I get that far today, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up. I'll maybe do a wee bit. You'll maybe see me walking across the White Bridge, but it'll be about another hour till I'm there. And then it's really the um, make or break of the trip, really, about this river crossing. Feeling a bit more confident about it now. The, the ground down here is a bit drier, and that River D doesn't look too high. So we'll see if we get across it in a few hours. Right, let's go. Okay, a quick, a quick update. I am almost down at the chest of D, and I can see the White Bridge. I'll just spin you around and show you. So, uh, yeah, just down there is the White Bridge, and I'll be heading up. The river crossing that I'm quite worried about is just down here somewhere. And then, I don't know if you can make out, but just about here, that's Ben Aglow. And I'll be cutting off to the left at that point, still a bit to go. And down that way is towards the Luna D. And there, oh, what a beautiful day it is! Look at this. Couldn't have asked for better weather today. It's quite. It's not. It's not too warm. In fact, I, I forgot to mention this morning that when I was. Um, it wasn't until I was putting the tent away. The um, there was frost in the tent, lower down uh, towards the ground, and the guy ropes, <laughs> the guy lines were all frozen solid. So there was definitely a ground frost last night. Uh, but now it's pleasantly, pleasantly warm. Not too warm. Nice breeze. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Right. Let's go get across the White Bridge and then see about this river crossing. Ooh. So across the White Bridge I went, and this is probably the, the closest to civilization I'd be for quite some time as well, with it being just a, a few kilometres along from the Linnady. Anyway, on I went, hoping that those river crossings wouldn't be too bad. Oh wee, they want my feet are starting to hurt a wee bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm just about at the river crossing, which I'll bring you to in a minute, but I don't know if you can see over my shoulder there's a wee... A wee house, that's actually a bothy, another bothy. 
So there are quite a few bothy options here on this uh, on this in this this trail. There's there's a few other ones further on, maybe just a bit further out, but not far to get to. So if you do get to this river and you can't get across it, there is a bothy that you can go and chew over your thoughts and figure out what you're going to do. But let's uh, take you to the river and I'll see. Yeah, let's see if it's uh, going to be possible. Right, here I am at the river crossing. I think it's doable. I'm going to get my gators on to snow just in case I need them further over, but I think uh, my plan of waiting till a dry spell has worked. But I can see what they mean when they say that there's been a lot of rain yet getting across this because <laughs> I can see the, where the level has got to. And if it was like that, there's no way you'd get across it. So keep it for a dry day. Monroe baggers amongst you might know this as well. This is a well-known way into two Monroes on the Ring of Tarf. I think when I did them, in fact, I know when I did them, I didn't do them from this side. I did it from the Glen Tilt side, but I still had to cross the river. Anyway, let's get these on as a precaution. And I'll bring you back on the other side. So as it turns out, the river crossing was fine. I can see how it can be problematic, but my sort of action plan of leaving this route until some a dry spell for this reason had worked out nicely. I, it was just a hop, skip and a jump across the river with no wet feet. Right, that wasn't too bad. I probably could have got across without my gaiters on, but it's a few bits where it was quite deep, but glad to get across this. There are still a few more river crossings to come, but that was the main one that I was worried about, so let's get going. Yeehaw. I've kept my gaiters on because according to the map there was another river crossing and I was like ah maybe not maybe there's a path around to the other side there's another river crossing <laughs> literally a few hundred meters up so um doesn't look to be as many stepping stones here but it still looks pretty shallow so yeah let's crack on I'll put the um hip camera on hip belt camera <laughs> for some real time footage and uh, yeah I'll bring you back later on right let's go Again, there was no real difficulties. If I hadn't had waterproof boots on, I would have had wet feet, but yeah, the, the rivers weren't bad. And it's um, important to say there are a few streams and burns to cross at this point, and if there has been a lot of rain, they will be problematic. Uh, you can see where the high level of the water goes to, and if it's that high, you'd need, a, need snorkeling gear to get across. Whoa. Just another one to be wary of. It's low levels at the moment, but if that's higher in spate, could be over the top of those uh, movable <laughs> stepping stones. Excuse me, remember shifting when I put my weight in them. Okay. Anyway, right, let's go. Ah, this is wonderful. Weather's continuing to be fantastic. And there's something nice about being in an area. I've never been in this specific area. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come and do this route. It was taking me to parts of Scotland that I'd never seen before. And it's just, it's just like... Uh, the first time you go up certain mountains and seeing the views, it's just something magical about it. Anyway, you can just about see the snow-capped peaks of the Cairngorms over my shoulder and there's a wee ruin over uh, over to my right. I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, I'll get the map out, but uh, it's 2.30 now, so I'm going to stop. I've run out, run out of water, so there's a stream here I'm going to fill up at. I'm going to stop for maybe half an hour and just, uh, yeah, get a bite to eat. So, yeah, let's do that and fill up with the water. So I stopped at this point for probably about half an hour. I filled up my water supplies and had a bite to eat and enjoyed the sunshine. It really was nice. It was nice to get the weight off my feet because they were starting to throb a wee bit. But anyway, I couldn't sit around for too long as I still had quite a bit of distance to go and I was soon on with the heavy pack and yeah, heading onwards along the trail. Right. I'm feeling a little bit puggled. <laughs> oh, my feet are my feet are throbbing now. Um, I've probably done about 13, 13 miles, 12, 13 miles already. So, anyway, there's a real change in the landscape ahead of me. I've come over this way, and these hills over to your right are the, uh, I suppose the, um, well, it's, you could Benalure and Vore, and I could see that it's just over there and Karna Rise over there, so I don't know if you call them the Glen Shee Hills, but maybe the, the hills to the north of Glen Shee 
It's got nice big rolling hills, they're both over a thousand metres, but if I spin you around here, you can see it's starting to change a little bit. You can see Ben Aglow right in the middle of the picture here, but the valley, it's like quite a steep sided valley, the V shaped as opposed to the kind of big open, <laughs> almost strath behind me here. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know, there must be a change in the geology uh, somewhere. But anyway, I'll sit here for five minutes, give my feet a break. I think another five or six miles. I'm going to keep going for another, I don't know, three or four hours, hopefully. But I'm in a bit of pain. <laughs> oh, right, this is, uh, it's beautiful, it's half past four. I've come down this lovely glen behind me, you can see me, and now I need to, I'll spin you around and show you, actually, I need to cross, do another river crossing. I need to be getting myself onto this path over here, where's my finger, there, see that there? goes up the shoulder, um, up into the top of that hill, there in the middle of the picture. Uh, so I need to drop down here, it looks like a beautiful spot to camp there, that green bit, wow. There's a few bits up, uh, just up the glen there, which would be nice, but anyway. I've got a few more um, hours before I'm going to settle down, get a few more miles in the clock. If I kept going that way, I'll spin you around again. If I kept going down that way, that takes me to the Falls of Tarf. It's just over there, it's not too far, and then drops down into the wonderful Glen Tilt. There's a bit of history behind uh, Glen Tilt, if memory serves me right, I think. A bit of Scottish access legislation happened there. The landowners never used to let people up, apparently. I think, I might be wrong, people will correct me. And um, further up the Falls of Tarth, I think it's a bridge where Vic Queen Victoria maybe visited. I should know this because I did a video on it a few years ago. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to descend down here and see if I can get across this, uh, this river. I've still got my gators on, so I think I'll be fine. And then it looks like a steep pool up the other side. So let's, uh, let's go. <laughs> Another river crossing that didn't pose any problems for me, but one to be wary of if it's in spate. It could be a bit problematic to cross, but not today. Again, that's fine today, but after heavy rain that could be problematic. Right, take my buckle down and get up this slope. Oh man. I've risen out of the ravine onto the higher moorland. I'm about 500, 550 metres here. And the, uh, the path, I'm home to get to a high point. Um, God, it says, uh, he says in metres and then uh, changes it to feet. I think it's two, two, 2,200 feet is a high point in the path. So if I can get there, it means tomorrow it's a nice gentle <laughs> start to the day downhill. But this is just lovely. Now that I'm a bit higher, I can see over that's Ben Aglow. I don't know if you can make it out. Ben Vurich to the, the left, but yeah, moving away from Glen Tilt and then if I swing you around this way, you'll see some of the other big mountains that I'm going past. Yeah, so on your right, it's Carnarai, which is I think at 1,000, oh, it's over a 1,000 metres now, further around. I don't know if you'll make it out or not. It's Ben Lure and Vore did those two after a wild camp a few years ago, fantastic mountains. Anyway, what I need to do now, there's a gorge down here, so I need to sort of walk in for a couple, a couple of kilometres. And there's a lodge actually, a shooting lodge uh, at the head of it, and then I have to come, literally the road, there's a road at that point, or a four by four track. It's probably about two or 300 metres as the crow flies that way, but I'm gonna have to do four or five kilometres to, <laughs> to get to it. So I'm only gonna stop in a minute and have some food. We'll see how far we get before I camp up though. I'll report back when I'm doing that. First, first signs of real civilization. Probably since leaving Abbey Moor. Middle of nowhere and there's this pink hunting boat. There they are, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, right, a wee update. My shoulders are sore. My feet are still throbbing. My leg, legs feel okay. Anyway, I was going to camp round about here because there is a water source here. But it's six o'clock, I've got another two hours of daylight. And if I camped here, it's not a low point, but there's still about a, a 300 foot pool over here. So I'm going to see if I can get to the top of the 300 foot pool. It's all in this um, 4x4 track or tarred roar. It's not tarred, but um, it's, pre it's, a, it's pretty good going, although it's sore on the feet. So let's see if I can get to the top of this pass. And that means tomorrow, as I said, it'll start off 
descending as opposed to ascending this but tough ask for the end of the day but ah, what a day it's been <laughs> who knows what it's going to be like tomorrow I've had no signal since leaving um, the forest so uh, I'm hoping that the weather's going to continue to be dry but uh, that's part of the beauty of this getting out of the way and away from it all so right let's go Oh, right, I've come about 10 minutes off the uh, the path. I just saw this wee hill here. It might be a bit breezy, but look at that view. How could I have walked past this and not pitch up here? God knows I'm near any water as well, but I'm going to get a tent up here and then just watch the sunset. What a place, and this big mountain over here, that's uh, getting closer to Benigal. It looks a lot closer, doesn't it now? Wow. Right, let's get this tent up. Right, that's the tent up, as you can see. Still a bit damp from the frost on it this morning, that's probably all the extra weight I was carrying about today. So I'm just going to leave it open and let it dry a wee bit, there's a nice drying breeze. Uh, I've got probably an hour till the, well less than an hour, let me see. Sunset's about 8 o'clock. Time now is half 7, so half an hour till sunset. So I'm going to wait to find some water, uh, I'll check the map. I'll do that and I'll come back and I'll report back later on. Water, food, get off my feet. <laughs> right, let's go and get some water. Oh, just the last of the light, I don't know if you can make it out. There's still some clouds kicking about and the wind's died down a wee bit, but it's still a bit windy. But yeah, what a day. What a day. And you know, the thing about today, um, I was kind of preoccupied worrying about the the river crossings, but turned out they were fine, absolutely fine, but I can see why two, maybe three points, um, if it's really wet and the rivers are in spate, you wouldn't get across, but I tell you what, I was glad <laughs> when I got those done, and what a, it was, it was just like, it was almost um, perfect weather conditions, those wee cotton wool clouds that were um, full in the sky at one point, it was absolutely beautiful. Anyway, I've not many, met many people, um, I've met a few bikers, uh, I think three couples uh, of bikers, maybe one hiker, uh, and that's that's been the whole point of this trip. I think I maybe mentioned earlier that this is Easter weekend, and Easter weekend is super busy, especially when the weather's good, so I kind of thought that going up a Munro or any sort of popular hill would be popular, <laughs> funnily enough. I could have maybe chosen to go up somewhere a bit different, but with the weather being good, I knew that the chances of the river levels being low was higher, so I, I thought this is a, this is the time to try this route, and it's been great. It's um, so far delivered really, really well. I've been looking for solitude, and that's what I've got. I think once I get down to Dunkeld, not tomorrow, but the day after, it might change. It might be a bit busier down there, but uh, even that part, I'm looking forward to. There's some beautiful walks around about there, which I'm going to be uh, going through and. Yeah, um, still a few days to go and a long way to go till I get home. I've done about 31, 32 miles of the 85. Today I've done about 20 miles. Um, camp spot here is just under 700 metres, 670 metres or something like that. So uh, we'll see if it's frosty. It was forecast. I've not had a signal, that's the other thing, no signal. Um, there's no wee pubs or anything to go into the first bit of civilization, apart from that lodge, a uh, hunting lodge, but I couldn't stop in there for a cup of tea. First place where I can get a shop and maybe a pub meal will be Dunkeld, and again, that's not tomorrow, but the following day. So, yeah, I'm going to retire to the tent just now, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, it's cold. Right, good morning. It's uh, just after six, and it's been raining. And rain showers um, through the night. Some of them sounded pretty heavy, and um, so not not what was not what was forecast before I left. But 
that's a, that's the downside of not having a signal. Um, you can't see the, the changes in the uh, in the forecast. Uh, so um, slept okay. My ankle's a wee bit stiff after I rolled it yesterday. Just need to get on with it. Um, yeah, I'll show you outside, but not much to see really. I've already had a wee peeky. Have a look and see. There we go. Not much to see at all. Pretty great. Ben of glows over there somewhere. <laughs> right. Oh. I really don't want to get up. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I'll be waterproof on, I think, today. Keep everything dry. So, yeah, let's get up. Right, it's getting there. Uh, the rain showers are coming and going. It's blooming cold, I tell you, my hands are numb. Um, that is my clogs, that's my, <laughs> my luxury item. They're fur on the inside. I actually brought these just in case I had to do the river crossing as well, but roundabout camp, they're great. Just allows you to get your feet out of the, the boots for a wee while. So, yeah, I'll probably report back on the trail. I'll get this tent down. Just keen to get going, actually, because I am quite cold. Um, and, uh, yeah, the sooner I start walking, the quicker I'll warm up, so yeah, let's see how far down the trail I get before I uh, report back. Don't know how good the audio will be, it's got the reaction cam, but pretty much wasn't it down since I put the tent away. Oh, I tell you, I was the hands were numb, oh, getting all the guy ropes were all getting tangled up, I couldn't tie them up properly because I couldn't feel my fingers. And uh, yeah, it's wet and miserable. So I don't know what's happened to the forecast <laughs> in the last 36 hours, but it's changed. Look at this. Just have to try and embrace it. At least I've got a track to follow for the first few hours today. Right. You maybe can't tell it from this footage, but it was peeing it down and a bit gusty and pretty cold actually, I was still at quite some height, uh, but yeah, I was pretty miserable to be honest with you this morning. Yeah, I don't know how much you'll hear, it's kind of hard, I'm not wanting to get the big camera out in this rain. Still in its wee waterproof bag there. But the good thing about this morning is, it's mainly, the first part anyway, is mainly downhill, just making it quite pleasant. And this uh, this track, which led up to the lodge a few miles back, is making. I think I'm making speedy progress, quicker than the last few days anyway, because I'm getting to my stride. But I'm just disappointed, because I've never been here before. I was really hoping to you know, take in the landscape. <laughs> I mean, I've been up the hills. I mean, that bend of glows over there somewhere. Use your imagination. And Carnaray is that way, and the track is basically going between them. And I think Ben Vurich. Which is a Corbett straight ahead. I think I'd mentioned it further back, it wasn't that one that's in the cloud down there, so Aye. Let's go. I'll report back in a wee while. Just hope it clears. Has a very much a warm sector feeling about it. <laughs> Though there's nothing warm about it. Ah, right. Onwards we go. Uh, right, the rain's going off for a wee minute or two, so I think what I'm going to do when they stop, there's a wee, the wee stone literally where the camera's sat upon I'm going to sit, be going for about an hour or so, so just get the weight off my back for a wee while and chill But the first rock I've seen at four or five kilometres, so I'm going to take it have a wee rest here. Oh. oh, that's nice. Don't know if you can see them, the geese. There's been loads of them actually, I noticed them last night, I could hear them. They weren't too far, the same sort of level as the, the tent. There's certainly been, that's about three or four flocks. Flocks, is that the right? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. That have come past, but I tell you what, it's starting to brighten up. There's wee glimpses of sunshine here and there. Um, I've just looked at the map, I've done about four miles, just under four miles this morning. 
in about an hour and a half, and I think I'm about halfway down the glen. And when I get to the bottom of this glen, I actually hit a road, uh, some civilization. It's a very minor road, and then across that road, I start to head up um, through some woods, Kondrogan woods, and beyond that, that's another bit I'm a bit concerned about because I'm not sure what the paths are like up to a place uh, called. Um, What's it called? Mains of Derby there, beyond that, down towards Loch Ordy. But we'll see. Um, I can only but give it a bash, but I'm so glad that rain's off. And over behind me are some of the, the hills, Ben Erb and I think it was Mila Coyor Vui, which were, they're not Corbett's or anything, but I did those from the Spitaly Glen Sheen. And I remember looking and seeing this road and wondering where it went. Well, I now know. <laughs> right, I'm going to get this backpack on and uh, head down the glen a bit and I'll report back. See you later on. Down the glen we go. Getting towards the bottom of Glen Fearnach now. I knew it would be a long slog, and it has been a long slog. It's quite sore on the feet coming down the, um, the tarred road here, which is it's tarred from about halfway and then down. Uh, so anyway, I can now see what the next sort of step of the journey is going to be. I've just seen, uh, yeah, seen that. I'll spin you around so you can see it. It might be a bit far, far away, but yeah, here uh, is Kondrogan Hill and Kondrogan Wood. And I'm dropping down to the base of that, and then I have to head up and over that hill, so that's going to be a bit of a slog, I'll just have to take my time, but yeah, the end of Glen Fearnan is in sight, my feet will be glad. Before long, I made it to the bottom of the glen and reached some civilization. and there's a short section of road walking I had to do before moving on. So that wooded hillside over there is where I'm trying to get to. I need to do a bit of road walking first, my least favourite part, so this is me on the road. Um, it's about halfway actually, it's about 42 miles in. So almost halfway exactly, so I keen to get off this and then up back into the wilds. <laughs> right, I'll report back when I'm in the woods. I'm at Kondrogan Wood on Kondrogan Hill. I'm glad to have got off that bit of road, to be honest with you. And now it's a steep climb up the, the hill to the place called the Mains of Derby, which I think is an old uh, ruin. It's lovely, we uh, tumbling brook burn coming down there, we're very green, so anyway, I might stop in a wee while and get this jack off because I am sweating going up hill now. I think I'll have a wee stop here, get this jacket off, rest my weary feet. My ankle's been fine, but my, uh, yes, yeah, just my feet are throbbing, just this extra weight. And, I'm not used to carrying. So I'll take my jack off here, probably take the rainproof cover off my uh, bag off because I don't really need that. Just sit for five minutes. Oh. I'm still in the wood, not really done much filming here, it's been a bit monotonous shall we say in, the, in these uh, forestry tracks, quite tough on the, on the feet again but I've just come to a wee clearing and I can see my route ahead, it's, it's quite daunting actually this is a bit that I'm really quite worried about and it looks like I should be quite worried about, <laughs> about it down there, down over there, let me just swing you around so you can see yeah, so down you might see some ruins down there, that's the mains of Derby. I'll not be heading directly to them, I should be heading just over to the left a wee bit. And kind of over the moor and then up, looks like quite a steep pull up, up and over. That's what I'm hoping to do today. But I can't just drop down there, I've got to drop. I've got to go all the way around here for about another kilometre, I mean a kilometre back before I can get to the, the moorland and it doesn't look like there's any paths. It might be okay. I might be okay when I get down there. Right, onwards we go. Sun's out though. <laughs> hey! <laughs> There's a bright side to everything, eh? Well. 
oh right tell you what it's quite cold when you stop <laughs> I'm at the low point again I've come down off the wooded Kindrogan Hill or Kindrogan Woods which is behind the camera and there was a uh, over the stile there was a grass path and that's kind of petered away to being there sometimes and not being there other times. In fact, if it wasn't for this bridge, I was about 400 metres over there trying to cross this deep, <laughs> this deep burn. And then I saw the bridge and I had to sort of come through a bog to get to it. So I'm just going to have to watch my navigation, um, which is what I thought in this section. Um, but I'm quite happy at how dry the ground is here. As I said, I've already negotiated a, a bog, but I think we'll be gaining height and that should um, sort of reduce the bogginess of the ground. Not always. Um, feet are, my feet are sore. I think I've done about 12, 13 miles since I started, and this is the first time it's not been on hard tarmac or hard forestry roads. And it does, you know, you can get the miles in. It gives you, you, know, can, you can really get some miles done under those conditions, but it does take out in your feet. So I'm glad to be on this soft grass, almost a path <laughs> ground. So anyway. Yeah, I am going to be heading for a lock and seeing if, to see if I can get a pitch next to a lock, if I can get up here. But uh, yeah, let's get going because I'm getting cold. Uh, I don't want to put my jacket on again. I want to keep warm by walking. Oh, right. Let's do it. Quick update. Well, just as I feared, it was that long. I think I did this, I did this route about a year ago. Well, when I mapped out. <laughs> I do remember looking on Google Maps and satellites to see if there was a route over this part. God, I can't remember. I remember thinking, oh, we'll just have to, just have to follow my nose, and that's eh, that's just what I've ended up having to do. There was an ATV track I was following, which was quite nice, and there was footsteps there. And I thought this must be the right way, but I ended up going over way over that way. So again, I've added about a kilometre on because <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm sure that's not the right way. So I'm just going to cross a bog at the moment. And I'm aiming to get up and over this range of hills here, that's Meal Rima. And uh, I need to get over there. Once I've got that done, I'll, uh, <laughs> the hard work for the day should be gone. But I've got another wee burn to cross here, so let's just follow my nose, be careful. Uh, I wouldn't fancy doing this after a wet spell. <laughs> right, let's go. This was probably one of the hardest sections of the whole journey, to be honest with you. And it probably doesn't look too bad in this footage, but this bog, you really had to watch every footstep. Sometimes the poles were going a good metre down, so I didn't want to lose my foot all the way down to the bottom of a bog. Bog update. That's the bog behind me, but I think it's continuing up the hill. It's just wet. I must, I must also point out, on the 1 in 50 thousand map it does say there's a path and if there is a path I missed it spectacularly I was trying to that's why I veered off that ATV track if I was doing it again I'd probably follow the ATV track because it, stick, it sticks to the higher ground then I'd probably just cut across but anyway you live and learn uh, I'm glad I've still got my gaiters on <laughs> so my boots are still dry oh man I'm tired right I need to get up here it takes me up to a pass and then I should be able to see my pitch for the night <sighs> knacker that bog is taken out of me. Bloody bog. <sighs> the troubles weren't over. As I got out of the bog and started to go higher up the hillside, the next issue was the knee to thigh deep heather, which hindered my progress. From going really quickly and walking quickly on the 4x4 tracks, I was now going at the pace of a snail. Right. Oh. Oh. I want to rest my arm on my walking poles. Right, I'm near the top. Let's celebrate being near the top. And uh, from behind me, you can see where I've come. In fact, let's see if I don't know if I'll pick it up. Let me just show you. Yeah, so. Oh, there's a big. Uh, what's that? What's that? See that? I don't know what that is. It's huge. That is massive. That looks like a white tailed eagle. I'm not sure if you get them around about here, but that is massive. I thought it was a heron. I don't know if you picked that up, man. That was. I think that was a sea eagle. Didn't realise you got them here. Anyway, right. <laughs> um, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but Kondrogan Wood is just down there. 
and basically between there and here, there's no path. I zigzagged backwards and forwards trying to find the path where it was in the west map. I certainly couldn't find it, so beware if you're coming between Kondrogan and over this way. <laughs> it's pretty rough ground. I've still got some rough ground to go. I'm heading over this way towards where that tree is and drop them down, so a bit of blue sky now. Ah, I'll report back later on. Let's go over here. At least the heather's a bit shorter. It was up to my thighs down there. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure I will laugh about this when I get to the camp tonight. Right, come on then. Let's go. I'm on a stile. There's a stile. There's a stile, but there's still no path on either side of it. Look. There's a stile. No path. Nothing. Nada. No path that way. Uh, I'm glad when I get down to this lock. Hopefully there'll be a path. I can pick one up there, but... This is tough going. <laughs> right, oh, man. Let's go. There is a sight for sore eyes. Still no path. <laughs> but I can see the first lock there. And then the second lock is over there. I think if I can find somewhere down there to pitch, I'll just pitch there. Otherwise, I'll take a donder down to that lock. But my feet are sore. <laughs> first decent pitch I'm finding, I am going to be taking. But yeah, don't think I'd ever get to see them. Right, let's head down, see if I can find somewhere to camp. This is lovely. Oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see me. I'll be able to shot it out. Back in shot. <laughs> well, when I was coming down off the hillside, I spotted this bit of green grass. I thought, oh, I might just stop here. I could have walked for another mile or two down to the bigger lock, but you never know. Uh, there might not be anything as nice as this, so this is idyllic. The water source just down there with the, the lock. Beautiful. So I'm going to get the tents up here. Oh, that's relatively early. Finishing comparison, let me see. Yeah, it'll be 20 past five, so a nice leisurely tea tonight. But I think I deserve it. <laughs> right, let's get this tent up and get some tea on. Oh, how a delicate spot is this? I've been to many campsites, mostly to summit camps, but this is this is just beautiful. The sun, I hope the, the sun stays out. There's an awful lot of clouds coming in from the south, but at the moment I'm just going to enjoy the sun. I've been down and collected some water. I'm gonna get these big shoes on, get my my clogs, my furry clogs on, and then make some tea. I'll report back later, but for now, I'm just gonna enjoy this. This is gorgeous. Right, just waiting for my tea, chicken tikka tonight. Uh, I usually leave it for 15 to 20 minutes. I know it says five minutes on it, but sometimes I find it still a bit chewy. But what, what a spot, eh? And what a day it's been. Oh my god, this is just the, the correct remedy. I'm going to crawl in there in a minute and just, I've got the sun shining in. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not warm, there, there is a cold breeze, but once I'm in there out the wind, I think it'll be lovely, as long as that sun continues to shine. And yeah, what can I say about today? Well, it started off pretty, pretty manky, actually. I was, <laughs> I was in a foul mood getting the tent away this morning, and you know what? It's dried out now, but it was still, uh, still quite wet when I pulled it out uh, half an hour ago, but this nice breeze and sun starting to, to dry out. But anyway, yeah, it was horrible this morning, chucking it down with rain, really cold. And my hands were numb, I just couldn't feel anything. And I just got going. And because it started on the high point, literally for the first four or five hours, it was downhill. And it was on that hard, um, some of it was tarred, some of it was just um, compact uh, four by four track. And that's really tough on your feet although you can get quite a lot of miles in. So we did that, I got a lot of miles in, dropped down to the uh, to the low point, which was the, the road walking section. And it wasn't long on the road, maybe 20 minutes, and then off into Kondrogan Forest, and that was tough. I was really quite tired by that point, going up the forestry tracks. It was nice to be in the forest, sort of. It's sort of sick to, sick to spruce stuff, coniferous plantations, yeah, it was okay. And then uh, I had the realisation of what I was aiming for, when there was a clearing and that that blip, basically that bit from Kondrogan and basically to here was just tough. That's some of the hardest walking I've done since probably the West Island way. But it was nice in a way because my feet weren't getting pounded as much but I just wasn't making any quick progress and there is a path actually coming off just the other side of the wee lock here <laughs> with an arrow. I'd like to see maybe that is a path that would be better to take. I don't know where it goes but I'll maybe I'll do a bit at the end of the video when I do some research but uh, 
Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy tonight. Still got, uh, I'm about just under 50 miles now, so still 30, 35 miles to go, but we are over the halfway point, so. Oh man, where's the sun going? <laughs> right, tea time. I think I'm just gonna have a relatively early night. I'm tired. I think I've overexerted myself today. Uh, a wee bit shivery. <laughs> um, it's cold though. <laughs> I think it's. I got a signal over there actually. It's to get down to three or four degrees. Um, and that was at Dunkeld, which is further, well, a lot lower down. We're actually about 450 metres here, so it's another relatively high camp. Anyway, after today and the solitude of this trip so far, tomorrow I'll be hitting civilization. Dunkeld's a lovely little town, but it's always busy. And it will be Easter Sunday tomorrow, so I think it's gonna be <laughs> I think it's gonna be heaving. Um and my route down goes through Dunkeld, then along a lovely, very another very touristy walk, which I I go a lot with the dogs actually. Or in and around that area, and there's a beautiful, beautiful waterfall. In fact, there's two beautiful waterfalls, which I'm really um, looking forward to showing you. Um, the weather's to change tomorrow, at the, oh, later on tomorrow. Some heavy rain forecast, so hopefully it doesn't come in earlier. But anyway, for just now, I'm going to hit the hay and say night night, and I'll see what tomorrow brings. Right, night night. Right, that's the, the coffee on the go. Oh, good morning. <laughs> and I'm in the murk. I think I mentioned yesterday, it's about 450 metres in height, so woke into the cloud and I thought it was raining, but it's actually, I think it's the condensation from the, the droplets from the tree hitting the tent. Anyway, I've had a leisurely start. I didn't wake up till just after seven. It's probably about half seven now. And yeah, I'm gonna have my coffee. Bite to eat. Such a nice spot this, it really is. I think I'll be back here. Don't really want to leave, but yeah, as I said, I need to get down to the hustle and bustle of the ancient town of Dunkeld. So there's a few lochs that I'll probably stop at on the way down. I've got a story about one of them actually from when I was a wee boy. <laughs> Don't know whether I should tell you that or not. Might get into trouble. Anyway, <laughs> more of that later on. For just now, I need to get my caffeine fixed and let's see if this lifts for us as the day goes on. What a morning. Lovely. Slowly starting to clear. Right. Just a nice wee dry spot where the tent was. And uh, yeah, I, I packed away. What time are we at now? Oh. 8.30. So I'll get the rucksack on, my boots on, I'll report back when I'm on the trail heading down down the road to Dunkeld. I think I'll be there for about lunchtime, so yeah, I'll report back later on. So with some reluctance I, I packed up the camp and headed off. This really was a lovely, lovely camp spot, but I needed to get going and the hustle and bustle of Dunkeld lay ahead. I've been walking for about 20 minutes. 
I've come down to the bigger loch, I think it's called Loch Eisnach Moor. I might have butchered it. And the one I was at was a smaller Loch Eisnach. But it's just beautiful. The, it's this wee dapples of sunshine. I don't know if you can see that in the loch behind me. And the fog's kind of coming and going, the clouds. Every now and again I'm getting some bursts of sunshine. Absolutely gorgeous. Another wee camping spot here, which should be nice actually. But anyway, uh, it's about four or five kilometres down to the next loch where I've got a wee story for you. But for now, I was going to take my jacket off, but when the breeze picks up, it's still a bit cold, so maybe keep it on for a bit longer. But yeah, this is, this is what it's all about. I feel good this morning. I feel good. Better than yesterday morning, that's for sure. Look at this. Isn't that just wonderful? What a place to be. Right, let's go. An old, old rage, these uh, open air bothies nowadays. <sighs> Quite a substantial house at one point though. Wonder when it was built. Next to the stream as always. You always wonder with these places, who lived in them and what their life was like. How long did this walk take you, Murray? Well, it's maybe 85 miles, but I reckon I've done about 170, all the walking and back to the camera. <laughs> I've spent about five minutes trying to figure out how to, how to open this gate. Look. Big, uh, big padlock. Couldn't, couldn't figure it out and then realised you just need to flood that up and open the gate like that. <laughs> I was trying to open the full thing. Could have been, that could have been a showstopper, or might have had to go all the way back. <laughs> right, let's go. I'm almost at Loch Ordy. What a beautiful spot. Oh, it's lovely, there's a nice breeze now. Oh, it's coming across a loch. I think these lochs are kettle lochs, if my high school geography is to be remembered. It's lovely, it's quite a big loch and I, from this point on, I think I'll start to see more and more people. It's quite a popular day walk, this one, so I'll head round towards the boathouse and I'll tell you that wee story about when I was a lad. Oh, lovely. I'm going to stop here and get a bite to eat, I think. We're going for a few hours. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a nice wee stone here for me to set my bum down on. Oh, and somebody set a fire here and damaged the land. Oh, good old, well done. Annoys me that. Anyway, I think I was going to tell you the story. When I was a Cub Scout, we came up here um, as a group. We were walking up to Loch Ordy. And I don't know, Cub Scouts, maybe it was about 10 or 11. And there's three or four of us, and we joined the Cubs because of a football team. We didn't really care about the walking and all that. Who, who wants to go walking? <laughs> oh dear, if I could only see myself 30 years later, eh? 35 years later. Anyway, so we, we came up here, and there were a couple of leaders, or maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 lads uh, of different ages, and those who were tired and didn't want to do the full circular were allowed to wait here by themselves. I don't think you get away with that now, you know, no supervision, but that was, that's how it was back in the day. Anyway, lads being lads, there were three or four of us, there were a couple of boats down by the go boathouse tied up, tied up to their moorings and uh, we were jumping in and out of them. We thought, well, it'd be great, why don't we just like unleash them, undo the rope and then push out and pull it in a few times. And of course we did that and uh, we managed to jump out. <laughs> but, on that day, the wind wasn't coming from the east, it was coming from the west, and the boat, we got out of the boat, and the boat just started to drift off into the middle of the loch. So we scarpered to a different part of the loch and hung around and waited for the other, the other folk to come back, and 
yeah, nothing much was said. Got back home, and we decided we're not going to say anything. It wasn't us. We'll just deny all knowledge. That was a, that was a group decision between the three or four of us. So that night, my parents get a phone call from the Akela's the Akela, the, Akela the, the, well, the leader of the scouts, <laughs> saying the the gate. The gamekeepers had had to get the, another boat to go and get this other boat which was floating about in the middle of the lock and there was two blonde haired boys and two other lads um, who fitted our description. I mean me and the other guy were the only guys. I used to have really blonde hair. <laughs> anyway, I denied all knowledge, said it definitely wasn't me. And about an hour or two later we get a phone call back again from the scout leader, my parents that is, and uh, one of the boys had caved and he'd, and he'd, he'd admitted we did it. Oh, gutted, I was, I was grounded for weeks. <laughs> I was grounded for weeks. Uh, anyway, that was a wee story when I was a Cub Scout. Oh, the sun's coming out, look at this. Fantastic. Right, shut up now, get a bite to eat and just chill here. This is a lovely spot. Absolutely love that. I'm expecting to see lots of people soon heading down towards the car park. Right. It really was quite pleasant sitting on the shores of Loch Ordy and uh, reminiscing about my demeanours as a Cub Scout. <laughs> anyway, I soon, I soon knew that I had to get going again and uh, saddled that backpack and started, started on the trail again. And it was all downhill now from from this point down to Dunkeld. But there's still a wee bit of distance to go before I reached Dunkeld, another nearly ten kilometres. But the sun was coming out and things were warming up. It was turning into a fine day. Oh, right. Back onto that hard compact 4x4 track. But I'm quite warm now. I think, I don't know if I've mentioned it. I know I've been telling you the heights I was at, but even Loch Ord is just under 300 metres. So most of this walk is at uh, altitude in, I suppose, in UK terms. And I'm now starting to drop down. And Dunkeld will be the lowest point so far. It's been quite nice. The way it's happened and the way the walk's gone, most of my overnight camps have been at high spots, so it started the day on a downward slope, and today's no different. So I'll be all the way down to Dunkeld. And then I think it's about a 500 foot climb up for camp tonight. Oh, but anyway, as I'm losing altitude, it's getting warmer as well, so I'm going to take this jacket off. And, uh, oh. Yeah, head back on my way in a minute. As expected, it was really quite busy, so I didn't do as much filming on the route down to Dunkeld, but uh, yeah, the uh, the path was that hard 4x4 track, and there was a few locks to pass, which had some, well, they had some boats moored up, and the thought did go through my mind at one point. <laughs> but I've learnt my lesson. No jumping into boats in the locks north of Dunkeld. Uh, only leads to trouble. Anyway, down I went, and uh, it was quite pleasant. Sore on the feet though, and I was keen to get to Dunkeld to see if I could maybe get some food in the uh, in the wee busy town. I've just come through Dunkeld. Um, I actually just met somebody uh, coming down here that I've not seen in years. I'll talk a wee bit, wee bit about, more about that later on. But yeah, I just stopped, and the best thing coming through Dunkeld is they've got a chippy. Look at this. Lovely, right? I'm going to shop, have my chips, and uh, yeah, I'll report back in a wee while. Day nine up there. <laughs> Bit of grass. I was wondering how I was going to cross this. I go across this bridge. Having enjoyed my fish and chips, it was now time to get through Dunkeld and navigate my way back 
off the roads and to another popular walk actually and I soon did that crossing a few bridges and I found myself at a familiar archway and a familiar walk to me anyway so busy hard to the camera out but the, the wee building straight ahead is actually closed when you get the good views of the waterfall so I'll put some footage up to see of what it looks like some old photos I've got to, just beside the uh, ocean, so you get a good view of them here. There's not actually much water in there. I've seen it where you can't see any of those rocks. It's, it has been dry, as we know, for when I crossed the Gildy Burn, but that's the Bran Falls. And it's a very popular area. I come up here with dogs quite a lot. Uh, rightly so, on Easter Sunday, it's, it's super busy. It's a shame that the, uh, the hall's closed at the moment for all the people that have come up, but yeah, spectacular. Anyway. There's more waterfalls further up and a bridge which I'm heading for, so I'll bring you back there. But look at that. Lovely. Beautiful. It's a lovely, if busy walk this, and it leads up to somewhere called Ossian's Cave, which is a wee a wee tourist attraction which is built into the rocks. Quite a atmospheric wee cave. This is Ossian's Cave. Well, well, here I am on the suitably named Rumbling Bridge. And I've been here a few times, it sounded louder when there's more water, but it's still an impressive sight. Some waterfall down there, absolutely beautiful. And the big gorge was oh, it's even deeper down that side. Wow, what a place. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, another four miles to go. Oh, just come off the path there, it's nice and soft on my feet. Must admit, I've been feeling good today. Really good, the weather's been nice, although the cloud is now thickening from the west and the forecast is for heavy rain, hopefully overnight. I'm really hoping I can get my tent pitched before it comes on. But uh, yeah, since the Hermitage and the Rumbling Bridge, it's all been uphill and I must admit I'm struggling a bit. It's my feet are throbbing. But yeah, just need to shut up and get on with it. And uh, I'm headed for a glen called Glen Gar and uh, hopefully going to camp there. And it marks the highland, the ends of the highlands. It's a hi I'm virtually on the highland boundary fault at the moment. And I think the uh, opening through Glen Gar marks the entrance to the lowlands and that'll be t tomorrow but hopefully I can get up there get camped before the train starts right still a wee bit to go let's go this was another part of the walk that I'd never done before so it was all new to me and I wasn't too sure you know if there was any suitable spots to camp I had no idea if the path went all the way around but yeah it was lovely it was a wee bit of an adventure going here even though it was closer to home yeah always visiting places you've never been to before is exciting. Well, I'm nearly at the top of the pass at Glengar now. Sun's still shining. Maybe that rain isn't going to come in, but look at this. Back up in the higher lands. Although this is still going to be the probably the lowest camp of the trip. I'm still having to sort of about 500 feet I've had to ascend from Dunkeld, I think. So I'm going to head over here and see if I can find somewhere to camp and then once these trees, but it's just lovely up here. Absolutely gorgeous, right? Feet are still sore. Did I mention that? <laughs> Let's get this on, and let's get to the top. It was absolutely beautiful, although it's quite close to the lowlands. It had a highland feel about it, and there was steep-sided slopes that uh, the path teetered along, which also meant there weren't many flat areas to pitch the tent. So where I was wanting to pitch, I just couldn't, so I just had to keep going um, and through the Highland Boundary Fault to find somewhere to get my tent up before the rain came on. Right, that's me walk through the Highland Boundary Fault, and though you can see me, see behind me even, the clouds are gathering, that rain's not far away. So just behind the camera, I'll spin you around and show you where I've decided to pitch. Oh, so this is where I'm going to pitch, just here, a small area. That gate's not been opened in years, the, the actual path the style's there. Right. Finally set up. <laughs> not the most scenic camp I've ever had. But the rain's not far away. I would have liked to have been maybe a couple of hundred metres back round the corner with a view up the valley. Valley? 
glen. But uh, yeah, it's getting darker and darker. So I'm going to retire to the tent. I might do a bit to camera when I'm in the tent. I'm just going to chill. <laughs> Home's down that way. That's tomorrow. Well, oh, I'm just in the tent. <laughs> As you can probably see. I don't know if you can hear that, but the rain is on. It's been raining for a few hours. But what a day it's been today. Had a good day today. I'm not sure how many miles I did. I think it was a bit less than uh, the last few days, but not by much. And uh, yeah, but I really made my day. I bumped into, you know, literally coming down from Loch Ordy. There was loads of folk, as I said, it was busy. And uh, there was one chap coming up and I said hello. I just kept my head down and he was like, Murray. I looked up and it was my... <laughs> I can't believe I didn't recognise him straight away, but it was just a glance I gave him when I said hello. It was one of the guys I went to uni with that I was very good friends with when I was at, uh, at uh, college back in the day. And the reason I'm telling you this is it's uh, down to him and another, another chap who, uh, after our final kind of exams, they invited me along to a hill walking day on Loch Nagar. And that was my first ever Monroe with these guys, so got a lot to thank them. Thank them for, I might not be doing this stuff if, uh, if it wasn't for that fateful day in uh, Loch Nagar, so. Uh, but yeah, no, it's um, it's fine, I'm not going to do too many bits of camera um, until tomorrow because, well, one, it's chucking it down the rain, and two, it's not the uh, most uh, picturesque <laughs> campsite. But that, you know, well, that's been part of the adventure because I've never done a lot of these routes before and there's not that much known about them as far as I could find out anyway, the research I did, it was it was a step into the unknown, maybe pushing my boundaries a wee bit in terms of um, or comfort zones, not boundaries uh, pushing my comfort zone um, and not knowing if there was going to be spots to pitch the tent at certain places, I didn't know how far I would get in each of the days, so yeah, a wee bit of adventure uh, but yeah, anyway, anyway, I'll shut up I'll bring you back tomorrow, tomorrow's uh, hopefully the last day and we'll see, hopefully this rain will pass overnight, that's the only good thing about it raining now, is that it'll hopefully rain overnight and uh, be nice tomorrow, so we'll see you in the morning. Hi, good morning. It's about quarter past seven. Slept all right considering it was absolutely tipping it down. Um, last night, all night. Uh, it's going off now. I've had a look at the rain radar and the weather app. I've got a, I get a signal now that I'm out of the highlands. <laughs> and there is a big heavy cluster of showers coming in in about 45 minutes to an hour for the morning. So I think I'll get packed away not going to bother with any coffee this morning I just get cracked on and see if I can get a shop in one of the wee towns that I'll go through before getting to Perth pick up maybe some juice and even better a coffee, who knows but I just want to get going, this is the final day the final push, it's about 17-18 miles today so still a bit to go and a lot of walking on hard ground so my feet are not going to like me by the end of the day <laughs> let's hope I can get to the end of the day right, let's do it Right. Quick bit to camera before the rain comes on, you can see it coming in. But uh, you're heading down this way, I'm a bit concerned. There's a first obstacle is this field here, and there's there are cows, and I'm, I'm not fond of cows. I know people say, Oh, they're so docile. Tell that to the people that have been uh, trampled by them, anyway. And there's a sign which has been broken there saying something about calves and aggressive, it's been broken, but, but I can see where it's going with that. I can just about see Perth, let me just see if I can spin you around and show you the so Perth is just down there I can see bits of it with uh, with my eyes but you'll not be able to see it on the camera you might see the mast on the hill there, my house is just below that look at that the sun rays I don't think that's going to stay very long so yeah, I'm going to get the tent down, let me just come back so you can see where the tent was the ground's a bit sodden. There's the tent. Just a bit broken down. 
I'm just keen to get going and get all my waterproofs on. Things packed away before the rain comes on, so let's do that. I'll see you later on. So there's my wee footprint of the tent, nice and dry. And I'm heading over there, so it's starting to rain now. I'm all set to go home. I'm gonna put the big camera away for the now. Getting the train is on for the next hour or two, so I'll just be the wee one. I'll report back hopefully further down the road. Right, let's move. So I managed to avoid the field with the cows. I, I hopped into a field next door to it, and I'm glad that I did because there were some young cows who were sheltering in the gorse. And had I gone through the field, I would have got between them and the herd. So yeah, I was soon through the farm and on the uh, on the road down to the first village since Dunkeld, which was Bankfoot. And I was really hoping the shops would be open so I could get some needed caffeine and also something to eat because I hadn't really had a breakfast at that last camp spot. So that is me breakfast. <laughs> I'm in back foot <coughs> and there's a wee it's like this Nissa shop. It's like the TARDIS. I thought it was going to be a tiny wee shop. It's quite big and they had a wee hot food counter at the back so bacon roll and a coffee. I'll tell you what, it tastes good. Yeah. Right, just uh, an underpass going underneath the A9 up there. And I'm trying to get to a wooded walk called Five Mile Wood. I feel gone by my bacon roll. <laughs> and my coffee. <laughs> right, I've come out. Try to get to these woods, I don't know if you can see them. I keep taking a wrong turn, but I think there's another path along there. <laughs> this is one of the challenges. It's not so much the highlands, it was these farm routes down in amongst the, f the fields. <laughs> I was quite worried about it as well. So I need to try and get over there somehow. I don't fancy going across that ploughed field. Anyway, the reason I stopped is you can see where I came from. If I spin you round, you can see Glen Gar, uh, which is uh, that notch there. That's where I came through last night and camped just below it. So I've come a wee bit of distance already. So yeah. Uh, I need to get to five mile woods or whatever it's called. <laughs> right, I'm going to retrace my steps. Another few kilometres added on. Try and get back onto the track I was on. Right, let's go. Finally, I made it into the five mile wood and it was quite pleasant. Yeah, it was quite nice and I made my way down through the trees before hitting the next uh, piece of road that I needed to go along. That's me coming to the end of five mile wood. It's quite nice. But now it's uh, a wee bit of road walking and hopefully a path on the side of the motorway. This is all new road in the last few years. So I'm hoping that my OS map <laughs> path isn't like the last one that I followed that wasn't there. So I'm really hoping there's a path up the side of the motorway. So yeah, we'll soon find out in about half an hour. The next stop is Lunkerpe. <laughs> Right. Just, oh, geez. Just come across the side of the field and I thought I need to get onto this side to get up to the side of the motorway and across this ditch. I'm going right over my ankle, I'll jump over it and oh see I'm gonna be swollen. Oh yeah bugger. What a stupid idea. I'm just gonna have to take it easy. See if I can walk this off. That'd be a travesty if I couldn't make it back. I'm only about 10 miles away to go now. That was a belter. This big heavy pack on. Oh. Right, let's hold on. Oh. Right, to make it worse. I just cut a short corner because I didn't think there was a path up here, but there's a big bloody cycle track. Which I couldn't see, so I thought I'd cut across. Anyway, I need to walk this off, it's sore. What an idiot! <laughs> A9 behind me, this is probably the least pleasant part. It's only about a kilometre and a half to Lunkery, so uh, yeah, I'm going to crack on, you'll see what I mean about the uh, the big massive track here. Certainly no, no way you're going over your ankle on this thing. 
I'm like, they're off ground on the side of the, the field. Did it. Right, let's go. So the only good thing about this stretch of the route was it was a long flat tarmac, which meant my uh, ankle wasn't too bad, actually. It wasn't until I got home the next day that I saw how badly it was swollen. Uh, right, I've just come through Lunkerty and here is a sight for sure eyes. I've finally reached the mighty River Tay, Silvery Tay. Look at that, the longest, I think, the longest river in Scotland. I think it's got the highest amount of volume of water that flows through it of any river in the UK, I think. Anyway, it flows down from the mountains. Not from where I've come, but uh, way up by Ben Louis and all these places. So I'll, I'll be following this down and this is going to be my companion all the way down to Perth. So yeah, I'm going to stop at a Roman fort, I think. Um, I've not been there for a long time. So many things that I remember from my childhood. Anyway, I'll shut up and I'll bring you back in a wee while. Um, just to make sure this path is going to follow the river all the way down. <laughs> So tempted to dip my feet in the water. <laughs> it's lovely though. Ah, oh, here I am. This is the uh, confluence of the River Almond meeting the River Tay. And I've walked down all the way down the Tay and this is where Bertha uh, the Roman fort of Bertha was situated, um, and that's where they think Perth got its name, uh, Berth. I don't know if the Romans called it Bertha. Anyway, this is uh, this is where the Roman fort was, based here between the two rivers, and then Perth is just a few more miles that way. I've got to go in land for about a kilometre and then back and across. But I'm going to stop here for a minute or two, get my jacket off, have a drink, and then crack on. Oh. oh, so nice that the sun's out. The other thing I was going to say is just on the other side of the River Tay there, literally, I don't know, two or three hundred metres that way is Schoon Palace, which uh, historically was the crowning, the crowning place of the Scottish Kings. I think the building that's there now is, I don't know, 19th century maybe? And the old abbey where the King's got crowned uh, is long, long gone, or there's only remnants left. I think it was burnt down. It might, maybe wrong. I don't know. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of history around about here. Roman forts, Pictish battles, <laughs> crowning places of kings. And the way I'm going to finish off Perth itself is an ancient, ancient town, and uh, yeah, I'm fin going to finish off right in the centre at the uh, the Kirk, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going again. I need to go and land up up the River Ammond, as I said, to a footbridge that takes me back down to this point, then across again. So yeah, let's get going. I'll uh, I'll report back. Hopefully, when I've got Perth in my sights. <laughs> oh, all right. God, I'm not gonna miss this backpack. That's right, for sure. Let's go. Perth. Here they come. From here, it was just a case of following the wonderful River Tay down to my home city of Perth. Right, that's us. In, almost in Perth, I'm on the North Inch. And the, uh, there's a North Inch and a South Inch, which are big areas of a grassland that were given to the people of Perth. I think it was by King Robert, either King Robert or King Robert II back in 1374 apparently. I think he might be buried at the Kirk. He was uh, the king at the time and he just sat just outside the boundary walls of the old medieval town of Perth. And uh, I think there was actually a battle here, an organised battle between two clans on this uh, this particular piece of grassland. Anyway, see the old bridge behind me, I've got about a kilometre to go so yeah, let's go and get this finished. I was almost done, I was into the last mile and was soon navigating my way through familiar 
streets in Perth and I was hoping to finish off right in the centre at the ancient St John's Kirk. I was nearly there and feeling pretty good. Oh, here I am, made it, centre of Perth, St John's Kirk, I think, just read a placard, uh, 10th century, which was 200 years before Perth was given the Royal Borough, or St John's, as it was called, St John's Town, and obviously the football team is called St Johnston, which is after St John's Town, this is St John's Kirk, anyway, who cares, what a journey that's been. Uh, it was a proper adventure, uh, I gained my solitude over the Easter weekend and told Dunkel the hardly saw anyone and I, and I, you know, there was bits where I wasn't sure what could be done um, and I'm kind of glad that I did this, uh, it can be done even if there was bits where I had to go back and forward and in and out so that's about 85 miles, probably nearer 87, 88 I've still got two miles to go to get home but for you guys, this is uh, this is the end of the video so Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Right. So there were quite a few people around um, this spot here. I felt a bit embarrassed, so I, 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 I apologise if uh, that seemed to be a bit of an abrupt ending. But anyway, here's the route as I've mapped out, and you can see uh, the high point was quite near the start. Although it was the shortest day, it was up to the Larry Grew before dropping down to the chest of D at this point, that's the, the White Bridge. Then after that, it's a bit of a pull up um, to the high point, that's, uh, that was where I camped, uh, sort of near Glass Chulichan and Carnaray, and um, then it was down Glenfiernach and then up over Condrogan Hill and then Meal Reamer, and at this point that's probably the Loch Eisnach down to Dunkeld, up to Glengar. <laughs> and then down towards Perth. And you can see on this map, the, the route says it's about 84 miles, but yeah, 84 miles and about 2,020 uh, 2, metres of ascent, but there was probably a bit more than that, uh, given <laughs> the, the bits and bobs that I got lost on. But yeah, it was a, it was a proper adventure. Um, yes, yeah, a step into the unknown. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. Stay safe out there. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next Wednesday for another adventure.